Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Ash Anderson and I make videos about the intersection of finance and technology. In today's video, we're going to be doing a breakdown of a behemoth in the tech industry and it is a Chinese company called Tencent. So across this video, we're going to discuss what Tencent does, who it does it for, we're going to discuss Tencent's financials, and then we're going to look at risks and potential future growth opportunities for Tencent as a business. So let's dive in with what Tencent does. So at its heart, Tencent is a communications company. I say at its heart because these are, I guess, the core products that brought Tencent to life. But, you know, now its heart is much bigger. But we're going to focus on that heart at least for a little bit because that is what really brought this company to, to the forefront. And so a couple of like really popular apps that are under their stable are QQ and WeChat. Now, QQ is like, uh, I think, AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, that used to be out back in the day, or MSN Instant Messenger, for those that are you know, from the UK, we used to use MSN, I know AIM was, was big over here, ICQ, those types of apps, that's QQ. But WeChat, WeChat is the bigger communication app. This one has more than a billion users and is really the Chinese super app. This app is used for everything. So messaging at its core, things like text messages, voice messages, you can walkie-talkie on it, you can do video calls, you can do group messages. So think, you know, your phone app and your messages app on an iPhone, or maybe something like Facebook Messenger, even WhatsApp. That's Those are like the comparable messaging portions that we have here in the United States and in most of Europe. But this app is considered a super app because it does other things like payments. So WeChat Pay is one of the most predominant payment methods in China. Very cool functionality. You can have it on your phone, you would go up, if it comes time to pay, you would show them a barcode on your phone, the, the cashier, they would scan your barcode, you've just paid. Or you could scan their QR code, you've just paid. So there's lots of ways to pay through this WeChat Pay, and that is the core of Tencent. This is the thing that allows everything else to happen, is WeChat and WeChat Pay. And the cool thing about Tencent as a company is, is that even if you are not one of the billion people that use their social apps on a daily basis, you don't use WeChat, you don't use QQ, I certainly don't, you still probably interact with Tencent and its gigantic spread across the world's industries on maybe a monthly basis. So if you play video games, it's a good chance that Tencent economically benefits from that. If you watch movies, they have a movie production studio called Tencent Pictures. Wealth management, cloud services. So yeah, if you browse on the internet, you might be using something that is put there by Tencent's cloud services. So let's just dive in a little bit to the Tencent Pictures and Tencent Games, just to explore what they have and, and just to show you how, I guess, spread out this is across the entertainment industry. So Tencent Pictures is a relatively new production company, which means that, you know, they don't have a huge backlog or a huge back catalog of films out there. But movies like Venom, uh, the second Venom that came out a couple of years ago, uh, Terminator, the newest one, Men in Black, the newest one, those were all produced by Tencent Pictures and are probably movies that, if you haven't seen, you've at least heard of. Now, upcoming movies, they've got a movie called Moonfall. They also did the new Top Gun movie that's been delayed a couple of years due to COVID. But those are also upcoming Tencent Pictures movies that you are likely going to see a lot of advertisements on or, you know, you might even go and watch Top Gun in the movie theaters. Now, Tencent Gaming, though, that is the huge arm. And if you have heard of Tencent at all, it is likely due to their involvement in gaming. Now, they own a bunch of studios that produce some of the most played games in the world right now. And they also own a good chunk of a company called Epic Games. They own 40% of this company, Epic Games. Epic Games is perhaps most well known for making Fortnite, maybe even Gears of War, depending on what kind of games you play. But they make Fortnite, Gears of War, but the real big key here, that the, the big kicker of what Epic Games make is, is an engine. They make the Unreal Engine, which is like the only other commercial competitor to Unity, stock ticker U, if you want to check that out. And I do believe I have a video on this channel about Unity. But yeah, Unreal Engine is an engine that is used to make a, a good majority of video games out there. Now, if you're making a video game, chances are you're going to select between uh, Unreal Engine or Unity or your EA games and have your own engines built in, that kind of thing. But good chances you're going to choose between Unreal or Unity. If you're choosing Unreal, then Tencent is going to benefit economically from that. Alongside Epic Games, the company also owns Riot Games, 100% of Riot Games. Riot make uh, titles like League of Legends 
and Valorant. Both are huge in the esports scene. Tons of players, always watched on Twitch. If you, if you open up Twitch, these games are always in the top 10. Lots of viewers, lots of players, big in the esports scene. That is wholly owned by Tencent. Are things like Clash of Clans, the makers Supercell. Tencent own a majority stake in that company too. They also own stakes in Ubisoft and Activision. So yeah, if you play a video game, unless it's like FIFA, which I think uses a Frostbite engine, which is made entirely by EA, unless you just play FIFA, there's a good chance that you're playing something that Tencent is economically benefiting from. Now, that's weird, right? It's, this company just has such a, a huge, big hug around the gaming industry that no matter where you turn, Tencent lingers. And even though I say, you know, FIFA probably doesn't involve Tencent at all, there's a good chance that they're licensing something to make FIFA from some company that is owned by Tencent or, or you know, even partially owned by Tencent. So yeah, maybe FIFA even economically contributes to Tencent's top line as well. Oh, and before we leave the entertainment section, there is one more thing. They own 10% of Spotify. So even if you thought, I don't play games, I don't watch movies, I don't use internet that is put out there by, by Tencent, Maybe you listen to music on Spotify, and yeah, Tencent own 10% of that as well. Tencent, 10%, 10%, there you go. So let's move into who Tencent actually do this for. And this is a bit of a weird section, right? Who who does Tencent do this for? Um, I intended to do this section for, you know, companies like Datadog, where it's like, who are Datadog services for? Or Twilio, if, if you've seen one of my other videos on Twilio. Who are Twilio services for? Or what are Twilio services for? That kind of deal. For a company like Tencent, it's for everybody, right? Tencent is targeting every single living human on the planet. They want everybody to use their messaging apps. They want everybody to play their games, watch their movies. They want everybody to listen to their music. They want everybody to use Tencent wealth management services, which we haven't covered yet, but Tencent wealth management is kind of like a Vanguard or a Fidelity if you're in the United States. You know, you can set up your retirement accounts, you can have robo-advisors, that kind of thing. That's Tencent Wealth Management. Or they want, you know, people to use their cloud services instead of using AWS or, or Microsoft's Azure or Google Cloud. So Tencent literally wants to capture every single human on the planet and bring them into their services. But they are doing a really, really good job of it, right? Because as we just discussed, if, if you play video games, you're probably paying Tencent at some level if you listen to music on Spotify, you're paying Tencent. If you watch big blockbuster movies, there's a good chance you've watched a Tencent movie. So yeah, even if you're not using their messaging apps, Tencent is still looking to you as a piece of their target audience for their entertainment portfolio. So we've discussed what Tencent does and who it does it for. And when I say we've discussed what it does, we've discussed probably like most of it, but there are other services that Tencent offers as well. And if you are interested at all in, in all the minutia, Definitely check out Tencent's website on their about page. They go into detail on, on pretty much everything that has been missed here and a lot more detail on things like wealth management that are difficult to uncover and banking and you can see how uh, WeChat pay works, all that cool stuff. Definitely check out their website if you are interested in Tencent. But for now, we're going to turn towards the financials of the company. And a word of warning on the financials, because Tencent is a Chinese company, it does report in that Chinese currency, it does not report in US dollars. That means that if you're looking at a website like Yahoo Finance that sticks to however it is reported, if you're looking at Yahoo Finance, it's going to show you the results in Chinese currency, not in American dollars, it's going to be in that yuan or renminbi, and you would have to do the conversions yourself. But if you use a website like Seeking Alpha, the conversions were done at the time. So Seeking Alpha is where I tend to go if a company is reporting not in US dollars, uh, just because it brings it all back. So as you can see, revenues at Tencent are consistently growing. These were 19 billion in 2016, that's 19 billion US dollars, all the way up to 84 billion trailing 12 months. So that's some good growth right there that we're seeing from the company. And Tencent is also profitable with $6 billion in net income in 2016, and that has now grown to $30 billion trailing 12 months. So to save you the math, that means the company is trading around about five to six times sales. And I, full disclosure, I'm recording this video in March. The markets are oopsie daisy, roller coastery, whatever you want to call it. They are wild right now. And especially the Chinese markets, they are up and down, roller coaster all day, every day. So I'm saying five to six sales today in March, mid March. This video comes out in April. It could be anywhere from 1x sales to 100x sales. Who knows with how this market is going? 
But as of recording, it's five and a half sales, which is not too crazy for a company that just is has its hands and its, its fingers in every single pie it could possibly get its hands on. Tencent also pays a dividend as well, and it's a small dividend, but with a company that's growing as fast as Tencent has been over the past few years, to be paying a dividend, that's that's pretty good. That's, you know, it's getting money back out, money that you could reinvest and buy additional shares with. Turning towards the balance sheet, the company has $40 billion in cash and short-term investments and $44 billion in long-term debt. So that is entirely manageable. You know, they can pay off almost the entirety of their long-term debt just with the cash that is sat around. And they're profitable as well. And it's like 18 months worth of, of net income can pay off their debt. So this is a perfectly fine business. There doesn't seem to be any great concern that it is going to vanish due to debt reasons anytime soon. Some things I do like to look for in, in a business before I invest is a good return on invested capital. Now, I look for around about 12%, the more the better. 12% though is, is what I consider good and, and somewhere where I'd start to look. 10 cent is around 10%. And again, every time I say 10 and 10%, it all rhymes in my head and it makes me giggle a little bit. But 10 cent is around 10%, which is a little bit less than I'd like to see. Another thing I like to look at is a return on equity. I'm looking for around about 15%, and Tencent comes in at 18.5% here on that return on equity. So it's definitely outperforming on that metric, and that's something I do like to see in a business. Of course, though, I should say I'm not here to make a judgment on this company. I'm not telling you whether to buy or sell it. I'm just giving you a rundown on, on what I see here and a rundown of what this company is, what it does, and what its financials look like. I'm not saying whether they're perfect, flawless, or whether I'm going to invest. Um, you know, full disclosure, though, I don't have a stake in Tencent today for the reasons we're about to discuss in the risks section. So the number one risk here is, is quite glaring. This is a Chinese company. That is a massive risk for American investors because, well, first off, it is an ADR. It is not an actual direct investment in Tencent. It is an investment in an offshore company that owns Tencent. So you have no ownership of Tencent. Foreigners cannot own Chinese companies. So if you buy shares in this, you're not buying shares in Tencent, you're buying shares in a holding company that benefits from Tencent economically. It's a weird dynamic, but that's a huge risk. You also have the risk that, well, look at Alibaba, for instance. Alibaba went and started this new thing called Ant Financial, and, and then they tried to make Ant Financial this big financial company. And that did not have Chinese government backing. And you know, I'm sort of piecing little bits of stories together, and this might not be wholly accurate. But Jack Ma, the CEO of Alibaba, vanished for a little while, came back, Ant Financial was kind of like gone, Alibaba has tanked. There is nothing stopping the Chinese government right now from deciding that WeChat is not a, you know, a, a good thing for the country as a whole and deciding that WeChat Pay is not a good payment platform and just giving that sort of privilege to a different company in China. So yeah, there is nothing stopping the Chinese government from eradicating the core Tencent business overnight. While it's unlikely, it can happen, and that's another big risk that investors should be aware of, is that yeah, there are greater things at play than whether this company can simply execute. Uh, it does have to deal with its government as well and make sure that its government is happy and that, that things stay on the straight and narrow to succeed. Now, as for Tencent's future, it does have some great future prospects and how you know, couldn't it with ownership in titles like Epic Games, giving it the Unreal Engine and all that kind of fun stuff, and even ownership in titles like uh, Roblox. So the metaverse, and I know that that like buzzword has kind of died out over the past couple of months, but Tencent does have a firm footing right in there if, if it does come along, especially with yeah that, that ownership in Roblox and then Unreal Engine, which would almost certainly be used in some capacity to build out all these different experiences. And not to mention as well, Epic Games' ownership of Fortnite, which already has some sort of metaverse aspects to it. And then, of course, there is the esports play. Tencent already owned two of the largest esports titles in the world. Might not be very big for us in the States, but overseas in Asia, people just love League of Legends, love Valorant, love going to watch it live with actual crowds and stuff like that. So, yeah, Tencent has a bright future there in esports as well. Now, outside of the entertainment industry, there are great future prospects in things like insurance and financials. They have uh, WeShore, which is going to be their uh, insurance arm. They have the, the wealth management that we've already discussed. So there's great future prospect there in, you know, not entertainment, not social, but actually just helping people better their lives with insurance products and wealth management products. So let's wrap this up then with some closing thoughts. 
Tencent is a behemoth of the tech industry. There's there's no doubt about it. This is this is an absolutely massive conglomerate that seems untouchable. Now, if this wasn't a Chinese company, I would bet any money that this company today would be trading a trillion dollar market cap. It's right now somewhere between five and six hundred billion, depending on when you look. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is going to come out two weeks from today. So yeah, it could be anywhere from zero dollars all the way up to uh, $2 trillion because of how wild the markets are. But the company has tremendous reach across the social landscape in China with its messaging apps. It has tremendous reach across the entertainment space around the world with the video games we've discussed and the movies we've discussed. And it is building a great big financial arm as well now with its wealth management and insurance services in China primarily. So my overall thoughts on the company, you know, 500 to $600 billion. It's a big, big company today. Like I said, I think it's, it's, if this wasn't a Chinese company, it'd be worth a trillion dollars easily. It's got some good growth. It pays a dividend. It's very, very diversified across pretty much every aspect you could think of. It is a great company, but yeah, it's that the Chinese aspect, the ADR aspect of it, that, that you don't get actual ownership of the company and that it's at the whim of, of the Chinese government in deciding if WeChat will continue to be a dominant platform in the country. That's the parts that would scare me off if I was considering investing today. But yeah, overall, Tencent is a very interesting business with, with lots of great future prospects and, and it's likely to play a part in our lives going forward you know, for a very long time. Whether you're watching movies, playing games, whatever you're doing, there's a good chance that we're going to interact with Tencent on an almost daily basis, you know, three or four years from now. So you better get used to it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been a fun one to make, just trying to learn about Tencent and all its different arms. So if you did like it, please drop a thumbs up below. I will be making a lot more tech breakdowns going forward. It looks like this is, you know, the most popular type of video on my channel is, is breaking down these tech companies and what they do, who they do it for, and the financials, which we just covered. So yeah, if you did like it, please do subscribe below. I'll be making more videos like this and more on finance and tech in general. Hope you enjoyed though. Have a good one. I will see you next time.